And we are pleased to be joined by the man of the hour. I call him Destination Ann Arbor's newest ambassador. You know him best as a standout corner for the University of Michigan. I know him best as, you know, that's Lil Will over there working out with, with Salman Salmani and Dion. And he got his man working out with the fellas from an eighth grader. And look at him now on the national stage making big plays two weeks in or two years in a row. And now please have him join us here on the I Love Ann Arbor segment here on Steady Dropping Dime. So, Will, first things first, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. I mean, fresh off a great victory. So I'm just trying to get my body right, trying to get everything back together. I'm feeling great, though. Yeah, so uh, definitely pleased to have you join us as the ambassador, in ambassador, I should say, for Destination Ann Arbor, which makes this show popular. I call them your tour guide to all things Ann Arbor. So one of the things we're going to be doing is uh, a little little ways from now, not too long from now, having you take us to some a couple of your favorite spots in Ann Arbor. I had hoped to go to a golf course or something like that, but it's probably going to have to be an eating spot. So what would you say your, your favorite spot in Ann Arbor is to eat at this uh, at this point in time? Where, where would you go when you if you could take us anywhere? Uh, I'd say right now, my go-to is a place called Slurping Turtle. It's like mm-hmm. a sushi spot. It's pretty, it's pretty low-key. You know, somebody put me onto it. I wasn't really into sushi or anything like that. So once they put me onto it, I started liking it. I go there every time I get a chance. So that, definitely that's a spot. Slurping Turtle, Slurp and Turtle is definitely good. Okay. Definitely. All right. We got a spot that Devin knows about. Okay. So we definitely mm-hmm. got to do that. I figure we might have to go to a golf simulator. I was going to try to get you over. Last week we talked about uh, Eagle Crest Resort and Eagle Crest Golf Course in Ypsilanti, which is a hidden gem. Mm-hmm. Outstanding, outstanding golf course. And I'm not even a golf guy, yeah. but I can look at that and say, man, this is beautiful. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know it's right here in Ann Arbor. Of course, there's snow out there. So you're going to get some swings in. You got to go over to a simulator. So we might find a simulator or something like that to, to get over to. But man, we got to get into this game. We got to talk about this big time matchup. Uh, Devin and I were, were talking about what a great player Marvin Harrison Jr. is, but he puts his pants on one leg at a time, man. Right. And so there, there's that part of it too. And that's what I had in mind when I saw you jump that, jump that RPO. So can you talk us through that play as it broke down, what you saw, what, what you read and how you knew where to be? Yeah. So as far as that play, I'll say they came out in the in the uh, formation with the running back in the backfield. He was behind the quarterback, so we had a call that basically was based on the formation and what they gave us. So then they shifted out to it, and I was basically on, on an island over there by myself with them. And I had a a good feeling based off film study and things like that that I would be getting that route, um, just because that's what they like to do. They like to ISO them and give them those quick games, those access, and people like to play off on them, give them a lot of room. So. I mean, my thing was, once I saw it, just trust it. He ran it, jumped it. And the ball was right there. I wish I could have scored. wish I had better vision on the play. It was, it was set up <laughs> wide open for me. But, I mean, I'm just glad glad I was able to get that momentum going for us early. So, 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 Will, the one thing I said, you know, watching Ohio State all season, it, no matter who they play, whether it's zone or man, they just let them run. Like, yeah. why aren't you touching the best player on the field? Like, what is wrong with everybody where they're allowing them to run freely? And so my thing was, is like, Whatever you do, whether you double him, you show him zone, show him man, whatever, he has to be touched at the line of scrimmage. And I think that's something that he wasn't used to. And he's like, wait, are you stopping me from going where I'm going? And you jump right in front. So going into the week, is that your same mentality of like, okay, I'm watching film. They're not putting hands on him. I'm going to put hands on him and make sure that I can make plays on him? Yeah, that was our game plan. I mean, I think that's one of my uh, abilities, too, to be able to get in people's face and be long and be physical. So. I haven't been able to do that much this year just based on kind of what we've been playing on defense. But this game, we knew nobody really challenged him at all. He wasn't really – when I tra- challenged him last year, he had a, a rougher time too. So that's really what my game plan was, to get in his face all game and kind of throw his rhythm, rhythm off a little bit. I when get, you when you know he's the guy, right, everybody's talking about him. He, he could be the number one pick in the NFL draft, all those things. I know, I know, but I want to hear you talk about the, the kind of excitement – you get because a lot of people get nervous, a lot of people get scared, a lot of people are like, Man, this guy, I don't know. But I know you get excited for that opportunity because you that same type of dude, right? Mm-hmm. Talk about the opportunity to play against a guy that may be number one in the draft, for sure, the number one receiver, 
and put it on display and, and on the biggest stage in college football? Yeah, it's honestly just a blessing. I mean, I just really thank God for that opportunity because a lot of people don't really get the opportunity that I had on the biggest game, biggest stage, and to have a, the coaches to trust me to follow them and have that matchup and for them to people to really see that that I can go toe-to-toe with a player like that. It's, it's definitely a blessing. But all week, for me, I think my biggest thing is just the preparation. That makes me feel more comfortable about the game days. And just feeling like I know what's coming, feeling like I know what he's going to give me, feeling like I know what his strengths and his weaknesses are. So that's really my mindset going into the game. Obviously, I know people make him seem like he's God, I mean, outside of our building. So – I just had to keep that mindset, like like uh, Sam said, he puts his shoes on the same way I do. He's just a man, just another He's guy. Just so, a man. I mean, just go out there and play football. Yeah, and ball player though. The the one time, see, you said something about film study, and that's the thing. You you prepare like a pro. I know that about you. Been like that since you were a kid, and so I knew you were gonna be prepared for this game, and I knew you were gonna be up to the task of covering that guy. But he's gonna make plays. And right. so that I want you to talk me through that mentality. Like he's so good, I gotta put any play he makes behind me. And what happened on the one the one time he did run free? What I appreciate, a lot of people were talking about how how he got open. I appreciate that you didn't give up on the play. And Ooh. were heady enough to interfere, like, hey, you know, it'll be 15 yards out of dude happen to make the catch. <laughs> that kind of dude. But right. still, shake it off, next play. That's the mentality. Can you talk us through all of that? Yeah, I got a, a ton of respect for him after playing him that game. I mean, he's a, a great receiver. He's has great ball skills, great great hands. Um, on the play that you're talking about, we were kind of – they caught us in the perfect coverage that they ran that route on. I was kind of supposed to be playing playing it underneath, kind of playing in like a soft cover two. And, I mean, they ran they, – they, they, they grabbed the safety away from me over top, and then he ran that out and up, and I was underneath it. And once I saw it, it was pretty much just go, go chase him. Try to try to get the ball, but the fact that he was still able to make that catch it just shows how great of a player he is and how talented he is. So I mean, I knew throughout the game he was going to get his sometimes too, and I was going to get mine sometimes. So going into the game, just having that next play mentality, I was trying to win the game. That was my mindset going into the game. You know, Will, I've I've been a ch- gotten a chance to watch you since you were a little kid, and I'm just like, <laughs> I didn't even know what your voice sounded like. I, I kind of still don't like if, if you didn't have your picture. I probably wouldn't even know who's talking right now, right? Remember, I called your games as a high school kid and all that, right? And I'm st- still trying to figure out, with your mentality, you're, you're so much different than all the other corners. Obviously, you've got an attitude, right? you got an attitude to you, but you've got a, a certain kind of poise that's less of like a corner, in my opinion, more like a quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to ask, why didn't you become a quarterback? Because with your attitude, your poise, your understanding of it seems like life, you seem like a 37-year-old man. Right, and that's what you want from your quarterback. Why did you play quarterback? You're tall. I'm sure you got some scouts. You can throw a little bit. I mean, I did when I was younger in little league. I did a little wildcat in high school, but I remember that little wildcat, little wildcat. But really, for my dad, I mean, I've been backpedaling since I came out the womb. I I tell everybody so. Backpedal out of the womb, huh? Yeah, I always been backpedaling. So I love playing corner, playing DB. So that's my that's my go to. Yeah. So this game. We could tell it got real chippy, man. You had coaches. You had Jesse Minter going over and waving at him, right? Which I was feeling. I was feeling because everything that everyone was saying, a lot of those, he was catching a lot of strays. It was direct shots at Harbaugh. But Jesse Minter, he was one of the ones, the main one that they were kind of pointing at. So I appreciated that about him. It was a microcosm to me of the back and forth. And I'm curious, you were in it last year. You were in it this year. Was it different at all? The, the level of chippiness and talking, what was up with old boy Igbenosa? It seemed like he had a little something to say, or did you have something to say to him uh, during the game or after the game? Yeah, so I, I hosted him on, on his visit. He was, he, was, he was debating between here and Ohio State when he transferred out of the portal. So we had a little relationship. So after Marvin caught that first pass on me, I was on their sideline, and I looked right at him on the sideline. He was, he was talking mess. I just looked at him and smiled. I didn't want to feed into it too much. Then later in the game, the last play of the game, we were taking the knee. He was on our sideline, and I told him, hey, that's your fault. I mean, you're supposed to be here with us. You, you made that decision. He, he, all he did was this. I guess he, t- he got the bag. when he, said, he told me he got the bag when he went there. But, I mean, we just chasing wins over here, so that's all we worried about. Dropping dimes. Hey, hey, that, dropping dimes, right? That's what hey, we do. Hey, 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 Ohio State dropped way more dimes. <laughs> <laughs> and pushed them all together and said, here you go, big fella. But 
he can hold that L too. He can hold them dimes, but he can hold that L too. Hold that L too. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what else was so cool though? Man, it was cool to see all those former players there. There were so many former players from the you know 2003 team were in the house all over the place. But to see Charles Woodson, man, like jumping in the in the photo with the buff zone, and then going on national television and putting on the turnover bus. Where am I turning on? Let me let me rep my man. Let me well rep. Will, hey, will hey well, I, I, got, I got mine on too, but it's a little different than the ones that they purchased. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's a little different. Yeah, you got them Cardi's on. You got yeah, them yeah. On. Hey, well, I got the Will2Johnson.com turnover buffs. So what was it like with with Charles being there, hyping you guys up, supporting you guys, one of the all-time greats, and then supporting you specifically? You, not just as a player, but what you're doing NIL-wise and your business endeavors, endeavors with, with uh, turnover buffs. Yeah, I'm so I'm so grateful to have him as a as a mentor in my corner. Because all weekend he was there for me, for me and the defense. He came and spoke to us on a Friday night and had great wise words for us to kind of lock us in and let us know. Like, I mean, they they tried to discredit us on everything we did the last two years, and and just put that in our head and let us know like we got to go out and prove prove them tomorrow that it's, it, that's not true and that we put a lot of work in and and we, we deserve what we get what we get. And also before the game, he was there to let me know. Give me just give me some some things to to look out for before the game. You know about facing a, a good receiver like that. Things you know take away the fade, have good footwork, you know all those little things that trying to calm me down, get my mindset right right before the game. So, and then also shouting out my brand. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more than that from a from a Hall of Famer, a guy like that, giving it back to me, uh, kind of passing that torch a little bit to me. I mean, it's a blessing. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything else for, from a guy like that. So tell us about your line. Tell us about, you know, the turnover buffs, the the buff it up shirt. Like, you got a whole line, so tell the people about mm-hmm. it. Yeah, we got the turnover buffs. Uh, those are the shades that Sam got on right now. We got we got tees. We got hoodies. We also got some WJ merch that's coming soon. That'll, that'll be on the site. So you can get all that at the will2johnson.com. And uh, go, go help us rep it at the Big Ten Championship this week. Yeah, absolutely. Will2Johnson.com is the website. Again, Will2Johnson.com. And, and Devin, I got it. I told you this yesterday, man. I I got, I damn near got emotional watching Charles do that, man, because I just feel like that doesn't happen all the time. You don't always see guys who, who make it like that kind of remember, hey, man, let me reach back and help the other guys, help the other guys that are coming behind me, whether that be you and the broadcasting business or, or will uh as a player and here he is and that's just he he does that all the time like yeah. so he's just a different dude like that yeah i mean i remember when i first met charles woodson obviously it was great to meet him and he's like this oh my gosh charles woodson like when i was still a player in college and then when i started getting into media he's always reached back to help me give me advice and he's asked me questions right i mean charles woodson is one he a dude that's a, that's really how you can describe he he is that dude in every right, and, and if somebody is coming up doing something good uh, that he's connected with, he he'll reach back every time. And I, I, it's like Will said, he's blessed. I'm blessed to have him in my life. I mean, it, it's 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 a blessing. He's a trophy winner, only defensive player. He got on national TV and said, "Hey, Will Two Johnson, talk. God bless." Hey, <laughs> That's exactly, that was the reaction. That was the reaction. I'm like, I'm texting, "Hey, man, you see what he just did?" I was like, "That's that's you know what the best thing that I can say." That dude's real. He's the yeah, same yeah. guy that showed up at Ann Arbor in 1995 in terms of how how he don't big time you, right? Mm-hmm. He, he's that same dude, never forgot where he came from. That's the biggest compliment that I can give anybody, especially a guy that's achieved the level of prestige he has, Hall of Famer, all-time great, you know, doing his thing in the media and now still coming back, giving back to the players and then reaching and helping a guy like yourself, Will, Kind of do his thing. You said some earlier, uh, talking about Davis and Nibbins. How does that? How does that portal thing work? Did, did do players kind of call you up ahead of time? Be like, hey, Will, was it like at Michigan, or is it just one of those things where once they once they come on campus, they put you with a guy and then you start recruiting them? How does that whole process kind of kind of go? Well, with him, that was more coaches. They really wanted him at the time, so they they put him on me to kind of show him around and come to his dinners and all that. But, I mean, the guys that I know that might get in the portal or are in there right now, they just hit me up personally and ask. 
should they come? What's it looking like here? What's the depth looking like? How are the coaches? How's the scheme? How's the school? So they ask that all their self if I have a personal relationship with them. But if it's more of a coaches, they want them, they'll just kind of let me know that they want me to help them out with the recruiting and all that stuff. Gotcha. So I, I speaking of helping out with recruiting, Devin needs you to help him out with some recruiting right now, right? So, <laughs> so first of all, time out, time out. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you right now, Sam always on some garbage. What so I don't you? know what you're about to say right now. Oh, my God. I just want to put that out there. He oh, about, what are you he talking about? about? I don't what know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead. What do you think? I don't know hey, what you're talking about. Hey, Will, he off with defensive right now. I'm I don't being real. I'm, I'm being real. Big Ten Championship. Michigan going back to take on Iowa. Okay. And Devin has a bus trip okay, going okay. down with Gold Limo. Okay. Right? And so people need to get on the bus with Devin. Listen, I all I'm saying is, Will Johnson might get on the bus with us. That, that ain't true. <laughs> that ain't Never true. know. Will Never know. Hey, you, Will you, might show up with us, is what I'm telling you. Anyway, hey, about see, 35 pairs of bus, maybe. You just don't know. You just don't know. See, this is where now you're going to have people thinking that. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. <laughs> Go limo, sending one of their buses down to Indy. Saturday morning. So if you're one of those people like, I don't have a place to stay, I really don't want to drive the four plus hours, they're taking care of that. Bus going down, eight in the morning, coming back after the game. But here is the kicker. DG going to ride on the bus. Everybody want to be like DG, where you can be like DG this time and actually ride with DG. Get your Monday morning quarterback on on the bus to and fro. But see, Will, they don't know what it's like to ride a gold limo bus like you. Mm -hmm. That's your, that's your your travel accommodations as a player. So tell us about the motor coaches, the luxury motor coaches that you ride on with Golden Limo when you're going to games, going to the airport, busing to East Lansing, that kind of thing. From my personal experience, it's like it's like riding on luxury. I mean, the the uh, what's it called? The drivers. I mean, they they have great hospitality. We call ours OG. He's always on our bus. You know, always dropping the defense. He blasting music, whatever music we want. He's always showing love. I mean, they got. I was putting the bags on us on the, under the bus for us. The seats are very nice. I always got the nice blue lights in there, real cozy vibes in there. So I mean, hey, I don't think you can beat it. Yeah, you talk about safety and luxury. That's what you're going to get with with Golden Limo. Now, hey, you know, Sam, I, I ain't even tell you this. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring a whiteboard on the trip, oh. and I'm gonna teach everybody on that bus coverage from one through four we might even get into some five and some quarter quarter half all that stuff i'm not gonna take it too far you know because it's gonna you know the level of the knowledge might be a little different but we're gonna teach them from scratch because it's a long ride right we're gonna teach them from scratch so now when they get to the big 10 championship right they're gonna be looking they're gonna, oh yeah look at that too high shell look at that stop sign look oh that's cover two i see the safety split oh no that's two man he's lined up inside with two guys. oh i'm just telling you man just tell you, it's gonna be good it's gonna be fun so listen you can relax the whole way if you want to. 12 p.m. noon arrival in Indy. So plenty of things to do in Indianapolis. You can go to visit Indy.com for different things to do. We're going to be having our pregame show at the Slippery Noodle starting at 4 o'clock. So you can come over to that. That's always a blast. Make sure you get over there and get in line like an hour or two in advance because the line gets around the corner. I'm just saying, hey, that's that's before DG even gets there. So... <laughs> Get there early. And then, of course, the game is walking distance from the bar. Everything downtown Indy is walkable. So this is the way to go. Ride in luxury on the DG tour, the Devin Gardner tour down to Indy, leaving Saturday morning, arriving in Indianapolis around noon. You got the all day to enjoy the maize and blue time, maize and blue festivities all across downtown Indianapolis. And then, of course, going over to the game over at Lucas Oil Field. It is outstanding. And remember, Will might be there. We're not confirming over tonight. We're not confirming over that. He might be there with hey, some buffs. It's, 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 buffs the, it's the best I could do. Never know. Maybe, maybe I can get some buffs that maybe you can give a give away on the bus. Uh, DG, yeah. Maybe we could do that. Hey, me and Will got this covered. Stop trying to put our thing down. He might be there. That's all we're saying. That's, 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 that's a confirm or that diet. He might be there. Am I, am I right, Will? You might. Hey, it'll be a surprise. Well, for those Can't who aren't too much right now. <laughs> for those who aren't going, I want to put a couple things on your radar from our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. A lot of folks, uh, you know, obviously gonna be staying around here in Washington County and want to get their shop on. So there are a couple of great events coming up on Friday. All right. 
coming up on Friday, December 1st, that you can take advantage of right in downtown, right in downtown Ann Arbor, Midnight Madness they got going on. And Midnight Madness, uh, holiday lights will be on, the windows will be painted. Downtown Ann Arbor, they're going to have sidewalk entertainment from 7 until 9. A lot of the stores are going to be open late. Great sales uh, for you to get your, your early Christmas shopping in. Outstanding opportunity there. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they have Moonlight Madness as well. So Moonlight Madness and Midnight Madness. Downtown Ann Arbor, you got, got it going on in the State Street District. That's Moonlight Madness. And then in the Main Street area district is Midnight Madness, where you got all the, the spots, the eating spots, and the, uh, the, the places to shop. Late hours, a lot of great prices. You can get more information at DestinationAnnArbor.com. Again, that's DestinationAnnArbor.com. So be sure to get on over there and check it out. Uh, if folks are not aware of how to get to Destination Ann Arbor, I'm going to make it real easy for you, right? Uh, I should have had the, the same thing available for the folks when it came to uh, the link to uh, Go Limo. Uh, but, you know, we'll put that in the comment section so you can check that out. But the QR code for Destination Ann Arbor, you need to be sure to get in on that as I bring it up now. All right, folks, there is your Destination Ann Arbor QR code. So just scan that, and that will take you to the website for all of the details on Moonlight Madness and Midnight Madness. So be sure, if you're going to be around Ann Arbor uh, on December 1st, uh, be sure to take advantage of the great opportunities. Again, late hours for all the shops in the State Street area and the Main Street area. Again, that's annarbor.org, or just scan the QR code and you can get to it that way, all right? So, Will, hey, man, we appreciate your time. This is not the last time we're going to be with you. Obviously, wishing the the team all the luck. Uh, what's it going to be like? I mean, you're facing Iowa again. You got an early scouting report that you can give to people about what Iowa brings to the table? I mean, they're a rough, physical, disciplined team, same team that they have been the last few years we played them. So, I think we'll have a good game plan for them coming in and we just got to play our, our brand of football and keep, keep rolling. We're on a roll right now, so keep rolling. All right. Will, proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. I, I called your games all those years ago as a high school. I want to see you get some more Wildcat. I remember the Wildcat. You was good at Wildcat. I want to see you get in there and get you some Wildcat next year. We're going to do this year. We'll wait till next year. Yeah, get you some coming. Wildcat. Go win you a Heisman. Mm -hmm. Win you a Heisman. Second defensive player. I don't see why not. You said it first. Just remember. Remember, right. you said it. It's coming. All right, Will, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you.